Don in London, hello. It's April the 12th, April the 12th, 2013. Just checking the date so I'm on the right page in the right day, as it were. My video is all about recovery from addiction to either substances or behaviour. My addictive substance, alcohol, my behaviour equally addictive around people, places and things. Trying to be with the right people, in the right places, doing the right things, being successful and trying to look right, being a chameleon rather than anything else, I guess. And these days I don't try and be anything but me as much as I can. But I can go backwards into trying to be what I think you want me to be. So what stops me from going backwards into the old ways? And what keeps me going forwards into the new way of living, sober, one day at a time? Well, a bit of courage, a bit of faith and a bit of confidence go a long way and then support. So the support I get is from a fellowship and that fellowship is AA, Alcoholics Anonymous. I never speak for the fellowship, there are no spokespersons, we are all but trusted servants and equal. So how does that work? Well, simply it's a society of people and not necessarily the type of organisation which is there which is there to fix you. It can't fix you. Nothing can fix you if you're an alcoholic. What we need is to live sober one day at a time and learn how to do that. Start from scratch, as I did in my case, after many decades of drinking. Well, not many. It was 35 years of drink. And then no drink for some years now courtesy of help and support from a society or fellowship which is not there to fix me any more any more than anybody else so if you are in AA you know I don't speak for you I cannot I can't speak for anyone in AA because you speak for yourself where you choose and it's all about sharing experience, strength and hope which is what I do of how fellowship and the 12 steps help me live life sober today I share the AA preamble so you know where I'm coming from or what AA can do for you. It cannot fix you and what you see is what you get on any given day. It can feel good, bad and ugly because that's what humans are like. Sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad, sometimes it's ugly. Sometimes people feel good and others don't and so on. So we get a, a broader picture of how people are doing in recovery, and that's how it works. So I'm going to share the AA preamble and emphasize one or two things. Alcoholics Anonymous is a fellowship of men and women who share their experience, strength and hope with each other that, with each other that they may solve their common problem and help others to recover from alcoholism. So it's sharing experience, strength and hope. The only requirement for membership is a desire to stop drinking. I'm being updated. So, a desire to stop drinking is where we start. Or less, in my case, I had no desire to stop drinking, or that I had a problem when I first was pushed into AA by a well-meaning family. There are no, no dues or fees for AA membership, so free is free. We are self-supporting through our own contributions, so we cover our rent, tea, coffee and some service costs, as it were. And we never have large amounts of money in balance, because we don't need it, and we don't want money to be an issue. AA is not allied with any sect, denomination, politics, organisation or institution. Does not wish to engage in any controversy neither endorses nor opposes any causes. At the same time, everybody in the fellowship can be allied with anything. They can be allied with a sect, denomination, politics, organisation or institution. They can engage in any controversy and they can endorse or oppose causes. So you have your freedoms back without drink inside you. So you make your mind up, free to make good choices today. That's, that's the essence of it. So AA supports nothing and the primary purpose, our primary purpose is to stay sober and help other alcoholics to achieve sobriety.
So you will hear all about the world and what's going on. You will hear about other people's religious beliefs or non-religious beliefs. You'll hear from atheists, agnostics and God knows who else. But they, help, they all have a point of view and it's their, their view. And you learn from the similarities in meetings and you learn about the differences in meetings. But we look for similarities in how people stay sober and value the diversity of everyone. So you keep who you are. And if you don't know who you are, I, I seem to have lost my identity by the time I got to AA. All I was was a, a drunk, uh, a homeless person. And then I had to start from scratch. So that's what I did. And it wasn't easy. I don't pre pretend it is. But for me, what made the difference was I was given support unconditionally and no one said, you must stop drinking or I won't help you. People said, just listen, please listen to what's going on, the similarities, and see what works for you. So it's a very broad church, AA. So many different types of people. I couldn't even know, I don't even know where to begin and then we learn how to live life one day at a time not the same as other people we learn how to live life as ourselves with freedom of choice which can be is entirely based on our current situation so it's not it's not wishful thinking it's about reality living life on life's terms and I share my thoughts and feelings if you like about things to do with the 12 step program for each of us how it works and April being the fourth month I concentrate a lot on the fourth step which is about doing a fearless moral inventory so we can find out through self appraisal what didn't work for us what was going wrong and what did work for us and what our part in life had been so far so very often we live at extremes of trying to fix life and if we can't fix life, we fix ourselves and our feelings with a drink. And then we can either be okay with the world for another 24 hours, but we can't stop drinking. And then the world doesn't want to know us because we are drinking. So getting sober is not only about being dry. It's about how to live life. So these 12 steps really do help. So step four, the fearless moral inventory which is saying what are my assets, what are my liabilities, what kept on happening to me and how do I break out of that and get to a place of courage, faith and confidence to be myself today. And that is hard work to begin with and then becomes a regular understanding of this life is better, living reality is better than fixing yourself and your feelings and trying to muddle on and I was in a real muddle by the end of my drinking so I don't underestimate how difficult it is and it's as hard for everyone nobody has an easy ride into recovery even if they say to themselves well it was easy actually it required quite a lot of personal effort but it's worth it anyway for April 12 2013 I'm talking about the living amend to start with, to start with, because we all have amends to make, to make to other people and to ourselves. So the living amend, what is the living amend to you? In my case, the living amend is to oneself. Stop the blame, stop the guilt and shame, and then forgive everything every day. If we can understand our new direction to be open, honest, and willing, then stop then we stop the blame game and if we stop the blame game with ourselves and find forgiveness then we could stop the blame game with everyone else and start to live life on life's terms and this is a big thing because people are the best they can be right now even when they're horrible that is the best they can be right now so we need to take account of that and don't forget we can be quite unpleasant characters ourselves because we're coping and dealing with extreme feelings often when we first start recovery and then when we get sober too because life keeps on happening so step four it may seem like a giant project if it is not broken down and 
the self-appraisal is difficult enough because we're looking outwards not really looking at what we did so my way of breaking down the fearless moral inventory and I was, it was suggested to me by the person helping me was to divide it up into five year chunks simply because I, I was quite old when I got to step four I was 47 years old and when I stopped, that's when I stopped drinking so each five year chunk there was plenty to be angry about and resentful about state of the nation what was happening in the country the state of my bank balance the state of my romantic interludes the state of my career the fact that drink was always a recipe to take the edge off and fix my feelings even though I didn't realize I was truly fixing my feelings because they were so raw and unhappy with reality so I think I w well no I feel that I would have loved to have been married had children and been like everybody else but that wasn't to be and that was because I was never satisfied with me as a person being good enough for whichever girl was trying to live with me or cope with me it wasn't their fault that's for sure anyway each five year chunk of the who what when where and how and why I began to see my part in matters as much as anybody else's there was a bit of the bad in the good times and there was good in the bad times for each and every one which is why we stick with it to a lot of large extent it was not all my responsibility and it was not all my fault and when I started to see that just being there in those times meant I had a part to play in it then I could see everyone was doing the best they could even though when even when their behavior was the worst for me of course I really didn't take account of how it looked for them back in the day or I did more than that I to totally took their point of view and accepted quite a lot of rubbish behavior because I needed connection and some sort of intimacy and the same was true for people with me, for girls with me. And we did. The love happens. Can't be. It, it depends on the quality of the love. And my, the quality of my love. I felt it deeply, but I couldn't express it very well. And I was terrible at accepting love, the love of another person. And I didn't know about trying to be perfect at the time. I just thought I was doing the, the very best I could and that was probably overwhelming in some cases anyway step four we begin to see the difference between the old life the old life where pride, fear pride and ego would keep us doing the same thing over and over again and hoping that life would get better we never did make life better because pride ego and fear kept us in a loop doing the same things over and over again and then the irony stopping drinking asking ourselves to have courage to change faith in doing the next right thing and learning to be confident by making lots of mistakes and coming up with new solutions so the old life fear pride and ego the new life courage faith and confidence and that's, that goes into step six and seven so it took me a long time it took a long time for the penny to drop step six defects are all around or all fat all found in fear pride and ego and on any day I can re revisit fear pride and ego because of things that happen and then step seven my shortcomings not enough of or lack of courage to change lack of faith and lack of confidence to do something new and that's where I got stuck in the old drink habit on any given day these days step six can worm itself back in with fear pride and ego when people are particularly unpleasant not because they're meaning to but they just are and then I need to remember it's me who needs courage to change faith in doing the next right thing and being confident confident enough to walk away or find a new path if that is appropriate today we don't lose our personality traits because we all have them even if they are considered defects it's only when they are, they are extreme, like pride, fear and ego is at extreme, because we are in, in extreme circumstances, or we behave in an extreme way, when there is no need to today. We can step back if we allow ourselves time. 
When you see a parent smack a child on the backside in public, your reaction may be, I don't know, anger and resentment that a grown-up grown up hits a child that you got smacked when you were young and then you started doing the same thing. Or it could be a hundred other reactions, taking the point of view of the child, taking the point of view of the parent, what led to that extreme behaviour. We may not know, but we can ask ourselves, is that what we want to do, if we were in the same situation? I don't know the answers, because I'm not actually aware of all the facts. Sometimes when we observe other people's behaviour, it will cause a deep reaction in us. We, can need, we need to learn how triggers in other people, and in ourselves, cause extreme reactions so we can deal with them today. And alcohol will lead to extreme reactions, or you know, bad behaviour the following day as well as during the course of the drinking bout. Step four, we find our assets and liabilities. We start to understand why things happened, how we behaved, who did what and why. And always, no matter what we do, we were part of either the, so the problem or the solution or both. This self-help self-appraisal in step four can be so useful and it becomes a real starting point to understand more about ourselves. What makes us tick and how we get things done. When I talk about or write about how, what makes us tick, it is our drive, our emotions, our desires and needs and feeling and the feeling of love above all. No matter what our, or no matter what, or no amount of material gains will ever feel enough. Ask anyone who has abundance. It is not the amount, it is usually the desire for more and more of something. Desire is an emotion, a part of being loved and being able to love others. Money can't love you back. So how am I feeling this morning? I'm hoping and feeling okay about this morning. At the same time, I am not expecting anything, even though there are repairs scheduled to be done in my home. I have set my expectations to zero when it comes to repairs over the recent weeks, because each repairman seems to start from scratch, just like me, not knowing anything until they get here. I just realised it might have been a financial matter, as new budgets would have been signed off last week, because it was the end of the financial year and the beginning of a new one. And my repair is quite costly, because two people have got to come and do some fairly fairly complicated maintenance on some plumbing and some electric work. Anyway, I will never know that unless I go digging into budget matters of the landlord, which frankly are of no interest to me in the long term. So why would I bother doing that? Just to be right, just so I know why it's taken some time to do it, there is no point. We can so easily get sidetracked and diverted from good purpose today. I feel tired. I don't feel angry. I don't, I'm not hungry. And I don't feel lonely. And I just had a call from my best beloved girl friend. Who is just a friend, by the way. And that's wonderful. And she loves me and I love her. And do you know what? It's brilliant. It's just brilliant to have a best friend who you can talk to about anything. Now, that's three out of four is good on the hungry, angry, lonely, tired scale of am I okay? So, I'm, a, I'm tired. So, and at the same time, I know that tiredness is not like it used to be because of other chronic conditions which are to do with type 1 diabetes. So, I need to be careful and make time to deal with health issues and be myself with anyone I may meet today. Be equal with everyone, no matter what. They too have a right to be here. Open, honest and willing. Courage to change. Faith in doing the next right thing. And be confident enough to fail at anything and try a new way today. I can only do one, one at a time. That's one thing at a time. Multitasking is not helpful to me today. So I don't want to skim the surface. <coughs> I don't want to be superficial and, and indifferent. And when I can actually say to my best friend, I love you, and that's unconditional. It's not conditional on anything. And they can say it's the same back. It's a truly wonderful thing to say. And mean, and un actually understand what love is. Enough for today. And can do, cannot do 
and the wisdom to know the difference so my morning started with step one powerless over alcohol people places and things and if I think I can be powerful over them life will get unmanageable step two don't keep doing the same things over and over again and expect a diff different result step three let go of knowing the answers me I don't need to know the answers today I don't need to know the answers to what happens today it can grow with me and my attitude of open, honest and willing courage, faith and confidence in the moment and know that's going to be challenged and it's very easy to go backwards into fear, pride and ego how dare they not be here and they, it's gone nine o'clock and they've been working since eight so I'm not first on the queue for my repairs sad but true that's the way it is so the serenity prayer which keeps me on, on track and on balance God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change. That's the rest of the world. Courage to change the things I can, me and my attitudes and what I do. And the wisdom to know the difference, moment to moment, minute to minute, hour to hour, and just for today. Let's hope it's going to be a good one. You never know.